Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. This is our third lesson on exponents, and today we're going to introduce you to a couple of new uses for exponents. The first of these new uses is scientific notation. Now you know that scientists deal with things that are really big, and they deal with things that are really small. For instance, they deal with the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is huge. I wonder how many stars are in the Milky Way. Well, would you believe me if I told you there were 300 billion stars in the Milky Way? That's right, there aren't 300 billion and two stars in the Milky Way, or 300 billion and eight stars in the Milky Way. There are exactly 300 billion stars in the Milky Way. Now, that's not true. There's just approximately 300 billion stars in the Milky Way, but that's a really, really big number. It would be really hard to do math with a number that big. If you had to write this out or type it into a keyboard, it would just take you forever. There's too many numbers. But scientific notation would allow us to say that much in a much easier, smaller, more concise fashion. For instance, 300 billion in scientific notation is 3 times 10 to the 11th. And we're going to teach you how to write that. Well, science also deals with things that are really, really small. Those are electrons circling the golf ball. Well, it's not really a golf ball. It's probably supposed to be neutrons and protons, but those are electrons circling it. And they're really, really small. You could never see one with the naked eye, at least. I wonder, I wonder what the mass of an electron is. Well, it's that number. It's 30 zeros followed by 910938291 kilograms. I mean, it, if you had to multiply with that or divide with that or add with that or subtract, that number is just way too huge to be useful. But scientific notation would allow us to write it as 9.10938291 times 10 to the minus 31st. And when you finish this lesson, you'll know how we got to that. We're also going to talk about using fractional exponents, which is just another way to communicate radicals. So let's get started. You remember that when we multiply or we divide by multiples of 10, that we're just adding zeros to the number that we're multiplying by or we're subtracting zeros from it. Another way to say that is we're moving the decimal point to the right or to the left. Let's look at an example. 6 times 100. Well, there's two zeros in that 100. So we're going to multiply 6 times that 1 and get a 6, and then we're going to add the two zeros to that, and our answer is going to be 600. Another way to say that is 6.0000 times 100. Now all those zeros I added to the right don't change the value. It's still 6. And when I multiply by 100, what I'm doing is remembering that there's two zeros in that 100, and that means I'm going to move my decimal point 2 to the right. My answer is 600. Well, when we divide by multiples of 10, we're just going to move that decimal point in the other direction, to the left, to make the number smaller. When we divide, we're making a number smaller. So we move the decimal point to the left, which makes the number smaller. 6.0 divided by 100 equals 0 0.06. We're just moving that decimal place two to the left, sticking a zero in that blank space that we created when we moved the decimal, and our answer is 0 0.06.
We know that 6 times 100 equals 600. And we know that 100 equals 10 squared. So I could replace 100 with 10 squared and say that 6 times 10 squared equals 600. Let's say I had a bigger number, 6,452. And I wanted to move my decimal point 3 to the left. I wanted to move my decimal from here over to here where the comma is. But I wanted to keep the value the same. What would I do? Well, I would move the decimal over three places to the left and put it between the 6 and the 4. But then I'd have to multiply that by 1,000, indicating that the real number moved that decimal place three places back to the right. And it would be accurate to also say that 6.452 times 10 to the third equals 6,452. And that's the basic form of scientific notation. A single digit number, like a 6, with a decimal place and then some numbers behind the decimal place, times 10 to some power. Well, what about this number? This number represents the number of left-handed people in Manhattan. No, 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 that's not that's not right. It represents the number of blondes in Pittsburgh. No, no, no. I I don't even know what this number represents, but it's really really big. I can't even read you it. It's just too big. Let's put it in scientific notation so it's easier to deal with. And how would we how are we going to do that? Well, right now the decimal is all the way over there on the right. And to get it in scientific notation, we need to move that decimal all the way to the left. So it's between the 4 and the 8. How far are we moving it? Well, we're moving it 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17 spaces. We need to move the decimal 17 spaces. So to convert this to scientific notation, we write the 4 uh, 8623 is 4.8623 and then we multiply that times 10 to the 17th power because to get back to the original number we have to move this decimal 17 places to the right. Well here's a really 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 small number and if we want to write this in scientific notation, we're going to have to get that decimal point, which right now is all the way over on the left. We're going to have to get it all the way over on the right, so it's between the 6 and the 1. Now, how far will we be moving that decimal place? Well, we'll end up moving it 21 spaces from where it originally was to its new location between the 6 and the 1. So to write this number in scientific notation, I'm going to write 6.1 times 10 to the minus 21st. Now the thing to remember about that minus 21st, if you get confused, is I want to make 6.1 a much smaller number because my original number down here is a real teeny number. I need to make 6.1 a smaller number. And when I uh, use a negative exponent, it moves that decimal place to the left and makes my answer even smaller. Another way to remember that is that 10 to the minus 21st equals 1 over 10 to the 21st. That negative exponent means I'm going to get the reciprocal. And that means I'm really dividing the number 6.1 by 10 to the 21st. So I'm going to make it much, much, much smaller. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. We're asked to rewrite this huge number using scientific notation. Well, how are we going to do that? 
Well, we need to remember we want to move our decimal point so it's between the 1 and the 7. So we've got a single digit number followed by some decimal places. How far do we have to move our decimal to get to a 1.72 number? Well, we've got to move it 13 spaces. So my answer is going to be 1.72 times 10 to the 13th. Try this one. Hit your pause button. Try to rewrite this number in scientific notation. And then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you can see that this is really pretty easy. All we need to do is take that number and convert it so it's a single digit number with decimals behind it. And I can see that single digit number is going to be 2.8. And now the question is, how far am I moving that decimal point to convert that number to 2.8? Well, I got to move it over there to 2.8. And that happens to be 12 spaces to the right. So my answer is going to be 2.8 times 10 to the minus 12. And again, remember, 10 to the minus 12th is going to move our decimal to the left. It's going to make our number smaller. And that's what we want, because this number is much, much smaller than 2.8. In the last lesson, we talked about some properties of exponents that helped us perform mathematical operations on numbers that had an exponents involved. And we're going to review those real quickly because the same properties are going to be useful in doing mathematical operations with numbers that are in scientific notation. So, real quickly, we have the product of powers property which states that if I have a variable x raised to two different powers, in this case I've chosen third power and fourth power, and I'm multiplying these two variables, then the product is going to be the variable raised to the sum of the two exponents. x to the third times x to the fourth will equal x to the seventh. The quotient of powers property is kind of the same thing, except we're talking about um, division this time. So instead of adding the two exponents, we're going to subtract the two exponents. x to the fourth divided by x to the third equals x to the fourth minus third, or x to the first, or x. The power of products property simply means that I can distribute that power to everything inside the parentheses. If I've got x times y, that expression raised to the third power, it equals x to the third power times y to the third power. The power of quotients property, again, is kind of the same thing. If I am raising the expression x divided by y to the third power, I can distribute that third power to both the x and the y, and the result would be x to the third power divided by y to the third power. And the power of powers property states that if I have a variable raised to a power, and I raise that expression to a higher power, then the result is the variable raised to the product of the two exponents. x to the third raised to the fourth equals x to the third times fourth, or x to the twelfth. Well, let's see how this might work with numbers in scientific notation. If I had the scientific notation 1.6 times 10 to the third, and I wanted to square that expression, what would I do? Well, first, I'd distribute that square to both the 1.6 and the 10 to the third. I'd change the expression to 1.6 squared times 10 to the third squared. That's the power of products property. I can distribute that square to both of the members of the multiplication problem inside the parentheses. Now, I'm going to carry out the math. I'm going to multiply 1.6 times 1.6. I'm going to get the square of 1.6, and that's 2.56. And then I'm going to get the square of 10 to the third, and that's 10 to the sixth. That's the power 
of powers property. I simply multiply the two exponents by each other and the resulting exponent is the product of those two powers. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. One point three times ten to the third multiplied by one point two times ten to the fifth. How am I going to do that? Well, first I'm going to do a little commutation. I'm going to commute some of these numbers around so that similar numbers are close to each other. So I'm going to put the 1.3 next to the 1.2. And I'm going to put the 10 to the third next to the 10 to the fifth. Now, I'm going to multiply the 1.3 times the 1.2. And I'm going to get 1.56. And then I'm going to multiply the 10 to the third times the 10 to the fifth. That's the product of powers, isn't it? So I simply add those two exponents, the 3 and the 5, and my result is 10 to the 8th. So simplified, the expression becomes 1.56 times 10 to the 8th. Well now let's deal with fractional exponents. And I don't think you're going to find this too hard. It's just a little bit of a vocabulary lesson. For instance, what would it mean if I said 9 to the 1 half power? Well, it didn't mean this. It would mean the square root of 9. That fractional uh, exponent means that I want to get a radical out of that. And I want the square root because my exponent has a 2 in it. So 9 to the 1 half power equals the square root of 9, which equals 3. How about this? 9 to the minus 1 half power. Well, that minus one-half power means I'm going to just take a reciprocal. So it would be equal to 1 over the square root of 9, which is equal to one-third. Well, how about this one? 27 to the one-third power. Now, you remember when we were up here using a half power, I told you that that 2 meant that we were going to get the square root. Well, that 3 means I'm going to get the cube root. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Try simplifying this expression. 1 over 64 to the minus 1 third power. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Okay, we're asked to simplify 1 over 64 to the minus 1 third power. And you remember that that, that minus 1 third power means I'm just going to take the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and do the reciprocal of 1 over 64 to the minus 1 third. And it's simply 64 to the positive 1 third. Now, that one-third exponent, that one-third power, means I want the cube root of 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So, the simplification of that expression results in an answer, 4. That's our lesson on scientific notation and fractional exponents. I hope you learned a lot and had a pretty good time. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find some worksheets and quizzes on this subject. We'll come back and see us again real soon, will you?